Hello there, welcome back to my world of stuff. If you are new here, why not like and subscribe to the channel? Growing very nicely now, we get new subscribers regularly. So if you are new and you've come on board, why not press that subscribe button? Why not press that like button and leave a comment? Right, um, this video is something that I was thinking about for a few weeks. I've been umming and ahhing over doing it. And there's been a bit of buzz about this particular film over the last few weeks because it had a recent rare re-screening on BBC4 to celebrate its 40th anniversary. And I thought, well, I'd like to talk about it, but I don't just want to review it. I don't want to do it. Then this happens, then that happens, and this is how it was made, and that was how it was made. I mean, there'll be a little bit of that for those who are interested. But I was one of the original audience of Threads, which is the film I'm talking about, back in 1994 when it was shown on BBC2 on the 23rd of September at 9.30, incidentally. I was there at the time, and I think a lot of the commentary that we see these days on YouTube videos and thereabouts, people have reviewed it and seen it, they weren't there at the time. They caught up with it since, and of course it's been screened a few times since, it's been available on physical media, it's not been unavailable for people, but as a production shown on TV, it's, it's happened again quite recently. I was there when it was screened originally, I thought it might be of interest to offer my thoughts on it from the perspective of somebody who saw it at the time. Now, as far as I'm concerned, I've been a massive fan of post-apocalyptic fiction for decades. And I can actually pinpoint where that really started. It was a confluence of events in 1975. I'd just gone to college to start my A-level studies. And they had a very well-stocked library full of science fiction books. And I was interested in science fiction. And I wanted to read some of the, the classics. But... I'm not really a big fan of sort of space science fiction and alien planet. I'm more interested in stories about the human condition and how ordinary people deal with the extraordinary. And that's the sort of stuff I gravitate towards. I knew of Day of the Triffids because I'd seen the slightly shonky early 1960s film starring Howard Keel, which is all over the place in terms of the story. But I still like the film because I love the story so much. I read the book. I took the book from the library. I absolutely adored Day of the Triffids and... It remains probably my favourite, most read book even now. I know it's not necessarily fantastic work of English literature, but I think it's an important work in the history of British science fiction writing. At the same time, more or less the same time, in fact, the BBC launched or had launched their post-apocalyptic, post-plague drama Survivors, which again remains a favourite TV show of mine. And there'll be a video coming up on that before too long, hopefully. A three-season series about the after effects of a virulent plague, possibly man-made, the show never makes that clear, that wipes out 99% of the world's population. And it focuses on a core group of survivors, hence the title, living in rural England, trying to stay alive, not against monsters, not against zombies or aliens or anything sci-fi like that, but just trying to stay alive against human nature when people turn on people just to survive, just to eat, just to live. And I've had that sort of enduring interest in those stories ever since. The, the idea of society collapsing and all the things that support society collapsing. Especially these days when we have this incredible infrastructure of technology that keeps us all bumping along. You do sort of think, what would happen if that suddenly stopped? Where would we be? So I'm drawn to those sorts of stories. And I love the imagery that you can get these days on big budget films and TV of deserted cities and overgrown cities and the chaos left after society moves away or is removed. And I just think it's haunting. It's very morbid, I suppose. It's a morbid interest. But I find those stories fascinating, the stories of the human spirit in times of impossible and extreme and unthinkable adversity. Threads tells a different story. Threads tells a story that's all too possible. It doesn't focus on alien invasions, it doesn't focus on plagues and viruses, although that's not quite so fantastical as it was once when you consider Covid. It doesn't focus on natural disasters that bring the Earth and people to its knees. It doesn't focus on asteroids crashing into the Earth. It focuses on man destroying himself, and that's a very real fear. And one of the depressing things about Threads, one of the many depressing things about Threads, is that that threat is still as pertinent now, possibly more pertinent than it was back in 1984 when we were living in the shadow of the Cold War. As I said, I'm not going to talk too much about the story because it isn't about story, it's about what happens. And Threads is the story of what would happen if there was a nuclear war and the UK was caught in the crossfire of a war between the USA and the Soviet Union. 
And as I said, I sat down to watch this because I was interested in these sorts of things. And I've always had that sort of background awareness of nuclear weaponry and nuclear war. We all know about Nagasaki and Hiroshima and how that brought World War II to an end. But this shadow of nuclear Armageddon has hung over the world ever since. And it's still there now, possibly looming larger than it has for many years. And I sat to watch threads and I can't remember now what the pre-publicity was, what the build-up had been. I'm sure there'd been magazine articles and newspaper articles and things on TV about it, but I can't remember that preamble. I just remember watching this 90-minute film. And I think there was a discussion programme on BBC Two afterwards. But I sat and watched this thing. And I suppose it's fair to say it terrified me. It really disturbed me. It shocked me. And I know I sat there at the end of it, stunned by what I'd seen. Because all these post-apocalyptic books and TV and films and things, there's usually a, a shaft of optimism, a shaft of light, that people will come through this and humanity will prevail and humanity will survive and create a better world. We don't get that in threads. It's as bleak as hell from beginning to end. And that, over 90 minutes, has an incredibly oppressive effect upon you. And throughout the film, you feel uneasy. You feel, this can't end well. This is going to be a very bleak and dark I keep saying story. It, it isn't so much about the story. It's about the visuals and it's about what it depicts and the reality of it using proper research material to say, well, look, this is what would happen. There's a voiceover. There's ticker tape across the screen telling you what's happening now, the effect of the bombs going off, what's happening as the situation deteriorates. Uh, basically, we're in a, a period where there's massive tension between the East and the West. Twas ever thus. When the then Soviet Union invades Iran as a result of American interest in that area and tensions escalate, people going about their business. We're focused on people in Sheffield, particularly one family, uh, Ruth Beckett, played by Karen Meager and her family and her boyfriend, Jimmy Kemp, played by Reese Dinsdale. She's become pregnant. They decide to get married. They're doing up a house. But in the background of all this, there's this unrest, there's this disturbing news reports of tensions escalating, alarms going off, the military are mobilising, there's a slight sense of panic as people are starting to panic by in the shops and it all builds and develops and we see a group of government officials in this sort of bunker, I, I'm not sure if this is under Sheffield but it's a, a sort of government bunker where they're trying to keep things ticking over. The title Threads of course relates to the threads that bind society together and how they collapse in catastrophe. And when the unthinkable happens, it is possibly the most chilling, upsetting sequence ever shown on television. The bomb goes off above Sheffield because the film was made with massive cooperation of the people of Sheffield who worked as extras and they were very much involved in this. I think they're very proud to be involved in a production of this type. You see these people scurrying back and forth, screaming, panicking, that one memorable scene of a woman who loses control of her bladder. And the the terror, the dawning realisation that this has happened, this bomb has gone off, this wave of destruction. And you see buildings destroyed, you see milk bottles melting, you see bodies burning, animals burning, the chaos and carnage that's created. And then we focus on Jimmy's family and Karen's family as they try to hide in these rather ludicrous little protective spaces that they built for themselves in a cellar or behind doors propped against the wall. It makes you realise how pointless that protect and survive stuff that used to be around is, you know, hide hide in the cellar and keep yourself locked away. And a lot of that is fed into threads. So as a, a youngish man, I'm not going to say how old I was in 1984, who'd experienced a lot of sort of horror and science fiction over the years and gone through a lot of these things, but was very much interested in apocalypse-type scenarios. This brought me up short and made me think, well, wow, this is the reality of it. This is what it would be like. There were precedents for this sort of, of dramatisation, of course. In 1966, BBC made a, I think it's a 40-minute TV episode movie called The War Game, which was considered so terrifying and so disturbing, it could not be shown. And it wasn't shown until decades later. I think it was, again, it was shown on BBC Two or BBC Four. And that is chilling, that is disturbing, but it ain't got nothing on Threads. And Threads itself came the year after a ABC film in America called 
the day after starting the late Jason Robards, which is also very affecting, but it has a little bit of Hollywood sheen to it. It's quite raw by American standards. It isn't as raw and unnerving and honest as Threads, because Threads just says, look, society is brought together by all this stuff. If this stuff is destroyed, everything falls apart. And this is what happens. There is no light or shade in this. There's no hope. It's bleak. It's dark. It shows us the reality of a nuclear winter where the nuclear bombs go off, send these huge dust clouds up into the atmosphere which blot out the sun for years. Starvation, disease, radioactive illness, privations. It depicts all this. People with terrible injuries from the blast. People who are, I wouldn't say fortunate enough to survive because I think in a real life situation I'd want to be vaporised. I wouldn't want to live in a world like that. Martial law. Looters being killed, people scavenging, eating rats. There are some really affecting and horrible sequences that you remember now. Particularly haunting is when Ruth leaves the, the family home. She's looking for a boyfriend, Jimmy, who we never see again. And she sees the devastation. She sees the ruined building, the burning creatures, the fires. And this one haunting sequence of this scarred woman holding what's clearly a dead baby. And, and her eyes, the, the haunting way this woman's eyes follow Ruth as she walks through the, the, the ruins so yeah my reactions to this were absolute numbness I think a sense of numbness that this is what it would really be like there's nothing glamorous about it there's nothing exciting about it there's no heroes who ride in to save the day and offer a optimistic hope for the future it's just grim and of course, what's even worse perhaps are the events that we are shown post-apocalypse where we see Ruth now as a mother of a child eking out an existence in a half-light, a post-nuclear half-light. The world is a barren, desolate place. There's been some semblance of electricity restored, but it's, you know, we're in a feudal society where the population of the UK is said to be between four and ten million, basically a feudal population. And people are eking out a pitiful existence trying to grow crops on radiated land and we see that Ruth who is aged and haggard because of the effects of radiation she has a daughter her daughter doesn't have the ability to speak English anything other than in a guttural sense just uttering words because there are no teachers there's no education system she is feral and the film ends in a particularly bleak fashion which I won't spoil here but it offers no hope really for any semblance of normality or anything we recognize as a society as a civilization it's just more savagery degradation violence and unpleasantness it's uh yeah it's not a happy place to be at the end of threads and as a viewer watching it back then i'm trying to put it from that perspective it's one of those things, I watched it and I remember thinking, well, I'm not going to watch that again. I like these sorts of stories, but I don't like this sort of story because it's too close to home. It is realistic. This is what would happen. And in fact, today it will be far worse because the nuclear weapons that exist today are far worse than the weapons that existed in 1984. And sadly, there's far more of them. And I've never watched it again in full. I, I never have. I, I just can't bring myself to it. I've seen clips, of course, on YouTube. I've seen people reacting to it. And I have for some strange reason, occasionally being drawn to YouTube clips of the actual bomb going off and the destruction, which is the core of it. But of course, I can't revisit the scenes of the misery and the degradation and the awful reality of it. It's just too much to bear. So I've got it on physical media. I've got a, I bought the original DVD, which came out from, I think, Simply Media back in the 90s in the heyday of DVD. And I, believe i've picked up the more recent blu-ray but i can't bring myself to watch the whole thing again and i don't feel i need to because i think once you see something like this it's imprinted on your head it's not entertainment it's not something you sit at home and think what should i watch tonight ah i'll watch threads because it isn't entertaining it's horrifying because it's true and it's real and it's what would happen and it's the sort of thing especially these days with all the international tensions that we hear about every day and these threats the saber rattling and threats of nuclear repercussions and you sort of you want to do what happened apparently in the 1980s when Ronald Reagan who was 
famously a sort of a proponent of nuclear weapons and the Star Wars project and stuff like that, he saw the day after, and I think he saw threads and thought, whoa, this can never happen. This must never happen. And we started backtracking. And we had that period, which now seems to have elapsed, unfortunately, where there was this sort of, not exactly an amnesty, but backing off from the proliferation of nuclear weapons. And and the, the problem is, of course, you can't invent something like this. These things exist, will always exist. Just a question of how we keep the status quo and stop people using them. And you do feel now, these days, that you want to force some of these warmongers and sabre rattlers down in front of a TV screen, get them to watch threads, and then grab them by the scruff of the neck and say, you bloody idiots, do you want to bring this down upon the world? Is this what... Is this the world you want to create? Is this going to be your legacy? It's... It's just an astonishing piece of television, and I'm going to say it's possibly one of the most important pieces of television ever made. It was written by Barry Hines, who had a history of sort of social realism drama, things like Kess, and it was directed by Mick Jackson, who went on to direct incredibly things like The Bodyguard. And I understand that during the filming of it, they clashed slightly because Barry Hines had a working class mentality and Mick Jackson was a bit more middle, upper class and their natures clashed a little bit. And Barry Hines had certain issues about the production. But I think when you watch it now, the clips I've seen, it's still incredibly powerful. And I'm trying to veer back towards me in 1984, how unsettling it was and how for days afterwards I think I was haunted by memories of it and you felt uneasy because you'd seen this thing and of course as time passes on you don't exactly forget it but it takes its place in the back of your mind and but in the immediate aftermath of watching it I remember for a few days feeling uneasy and feeling that the world was a very fragile place and it could all end at the press of a button by a lunatic and that sadly is still the situation today. So those are my thoughts on Threads and the impact it had on me. And as I say, it's not a piece I can watch again because I know it's going to be 90 minutes of bleakness. And I think in the world that we're in today, it's not something that you want to sit and watch out of choice. But I think if you've not seen it, you need to see it. Because I think if the human spirit, if the human voice can change anything, can have any impact. And I'm always dubious about protesting and organised petitions, whether that stuff can make any difference. But I think when it comes to nuclear weapons and the apocalyptic results that come from the use of apocalyptic weapons, I just think that if people rise up enough and say, no, 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 this isn't good enough, we don't want this threat hanging above our heads, maybe it's a bit fanciful to think that we can make a difference. But I think... We need to try and make a difference because none of us want this to happen. The world is a bleak, dark place. Life's not always fun. But whatever life you're living is better than the life that Threads promises us. And Threads, 40 years on, it still lingers in my memory as something that was a stark, bold and disturbing piece of television. And it still is. Right, thank you for listening to my rambles about threads. You'll have noticed I haven't put the credits on either side because it didn't seem appropriate to have jaunty music and jaunty title sequences when I'm talking about something as dark and horrifying as threads. But I would be interested to know what your thoughts are. I'd be interested to hear from people who saw it at the time because I know a lot of my viewers are of, a, of an age. And anybody who might have seen it on its recent screening, what effect did it have on you? What, what do you think about it as a production? What do you think about what it's saying and you know, what impact did it have on you then and now? Because I, I can't imagine anybody walking away from threads and thinking, wow, that was great. I really enjoyed that because it's not that sort of thing. So yeah, please leave a comment down below. Let me know what you thought of threads. Right. Uh, please like and subscribe and all this sort of stuff. I will see you soon with hopefully some slightly more upbeat and life affirming material. Until I do, keep taking the stuff. <laughs>